Good morning, I'm Lance Lysowski, the Sabres beat writer for the Buffalo News, coming to you, well, not exactly live, but I am in Florida ahead of the Sabres game against the Panthers. If Buffalo wins, it controls its own destiny the rest of the way over the last six games because it has games in hand that would split the season series with the Panthers and... Yes, meaningful hockey in April for the Sabres. I know it's something that this fan base has been waiting for for about a decade. And considering there's time this morning, I thought this would be a good opportunity to take questions from, from readers submitted on Twitter or email. Um, please bear with me as I'm recording this on my phone since my laptop is giving some me some issues this morning. But hey, all the same for you guys, I'm sure. So thank you very much. I know it's been a bit since I've done one of these. Uh, video mailbags is essentially what it is, but treat it as a podcast. Put it on, listen to it, give you something to listen to leading up to Puck Drop on Tuesday night in Florida. So right off the top, thank you for everybody for submitting questions. Again, I'm Lance Lysowski of the Buffalo News, Sabres beat writer. Uh, right off the top, Greg Voris. Greg, thank you very much. What's Kyle Ocposo's future with the Sabres? This is one I've gotten quite a bit recently. Uh, Ocposo, of course, is a pending unrestricted free agent. If the Sabres choose not to bring him back, he would be free to sign elsewhere in July. I do not anticipate that happening. I see Kyle Ocposo returning on a short-term deal. Of course, the cap hit would be lower than the $6-plus million dollars that he's making in the final year of that long-term deal that he signed with Buffalo back in the summer of 2016. And um, I know that this one comes up because, of course, he's the captain and uh, everybody wants to know if that bottom six is going to be, re you know, I guess, reconfigured entering next season. I still think that Ocposo, with what he does on and off the ice, that in includes – just the work rate that he sets for the rest of the group and practices with how hard he works. Um, you need players like that when you have such a young team. And um, everybody's going to point to the goals. And, of course, those are down. But his role was far different than it was a year ago when he scored 20. So I still think that he has plenty to give and the perfect kind of guy. Um, he's good defensively, hard on the forecheck. You need that in your bottom six plus he could put the puck in the net that's sort of hard to find when you're looking at a veteran with that skill set so thanks greg uh noah what do you predict happens with victor olsen this offseason noah the writing seems to be on the wall that victor olsen is going to be on a different team next season he has one year left on his deal at you know a shade under five million dollars and he scores goals. It's tough to really say that they're just going to completely walk away from somebody who's going to end up with close to 30. You know, that's a luxury for a lot of teams. The Sabres just have so much offense that I think that it, it leads to people maybe nitpicking Olsen's game even more than they did in previous years. And, you know, I, he scored a lot of empty netters. His 5-on-5 five -five game has just come and gone and been way more inconsistent than even in previous years. I just think that with what their needs are going to be next year, Kulik's getting close to, to graduating to the NHL, Matt Savoy is getting closer. At some point, you're just going to have a log jam at forward. And, you know, if if neither of those two are going to be graduated to the NHL next season, I do believe that this team needs a different kind of presence in that bottom six. Um, but it's not as easy as, as a, of a decision as some are making it out to be because there's no guarantee the Kulik's going to be ready. You're just going to walk away from 30 goals, you know, close to 30 goals on, you know, hoping that, you know, a kid who has a lot of work to do on the defensive side of his game is, is going to be ready. There's some risk involved. I just think that you look at a team like Seattle makes a lot of sense for me. Of course, Jason Botterill's there and they have a surplus on D. The Sabres are, are, are going to go out and try to get another defenseman. It's no... No secret, they tried to get Jacob Chikrin, and that Olsen contract, his ability to score goals, I think it's going to be attractive to the right team. It's all going to be about fit for him and for the Sabres in terms of finding the right suitor. Certainly a storyline to watch, so thank you, Noah. John Jarzinski, John, thank you very much. Is there any chance the Sabres are even younger next season? John, of course there is. I mean, Craig Anderson, the average age is going to be altered significantly because they're going to lose a 41-year-old goaltender. Uh, all signs point to be this being Anderson's final NHL season. A heck of a run. He's going to be in the USA Hockey Hall of Fame. Um, it's been, you know, at least from my perspective, pretty neat covering a guy like that with that resume and the perspective that he's able to offer. Um, so 
for example, Devin Levi, who's 21 years old, could be replacing Craig Anderson. Your average age is going down quite a bit just there. Um, and this is even if Kulik doesn't make the team and Matt Savoy doesn't make the team. So absolutely. Now, I would caution everybody to not think that Kul like it's not a guarantee that Kulik is going to be in the NHL at the start of next season. A big piece of this is going to be how does he look in the playoffs? Like, how is he going to – and I'm, I'm talking specifically about his defense. That is going to be the key to him taking that next step to the NHL. J.J. Paterka answered a lot of questions about that side of his game late last regular season and into the playoffs, all the details that he showed. To be honest with you, I see Matt Savoy as – a much more advanced offensive player as Yuri Kalik. Now the tricky part there for Savoy is the physical part of it. Cause of course he very similar to Jack Quinn is going to be giving up a lot of size and strength. Now are the Sabres in the frame of mind where they think that he can still play through it and gain a lot throughout that process. Um, that's going to be the question that's, well, going to be answered or revealed through training camp. Um, we'll get to that later. I know that that's one of the questions we have. So thank you very much, John. Uncle Orton. Um, it's funny using these Twitter names. It sounds ridiculous. But thank you for the question. What would you guess the sentiment is is in the locker room entering this game against Florida if the Sabres are starting? Devin Levi. Devin Levi, of course, has only been here for a few weeks, whereas Uko Pekalukin's been with the team since November. Eric Comrie through injuries has been here since the first game Craig Anderson of course is dealing with an upper body body injury so he's not a, an option to play tonight I'm sure that players will never talk about this goal nobody wants to throw their teammate under the bus Lukanen and Comrie are so well liked in the room and good on Lukanen to have a couple of really strong games here um some rocky moments against the Devils but he got a win and he gave his his, his team a chance to win against a really good opponent in a game they needed to to pull out a victory so good on him Comrie has a two-game win streak and tough situation for that guy to find himself in injuries underperformance on defense and he had to find his own game let's not ignore the fact that these two Lucan and Comrie have had opportunities to really answer that question and goal for the Sabres to prove that they're the solution and it's just been too up and down so I think in the the grand scheme of things of course I'm sure that it might surprise some players you know and this goes back to last week it going into that Rangers game to start Levi in that situation which was also a must win in a lot of ways hey he he answered a lot of questions I'm sorry to say that phrase again but he did I think that nobody really knew what they were going to get in Devin Levi they saw him in practice of course everybody knows the resume but for him to come in and have the game that he had against the Rangers, I think gives people a lot more comfort. And I'm speaking about in that locker room about what he can do in a situation against the Panthers. And hey, that's the team that drafted him. There's a lot at stake there. I'm sure that he wants to to prove to them that he should have been the goalie of the future. They traded him because they had Spencer Knight. Um, you know, all the best to Spencer Knight as he uh, deals with a an issue that has landed him in the um, the player assistant program. Um, but. Hey, I think Alex Lyon is slated to start for the Panthers. Devin Levi for Buffalo. It's a situation that nobody would have predicted a few months ago, but hey, that's sports for you. So uh, thank you very much for that question. That Buffalo guy, what are your thoughts on the season so far? It's been everything this organization and its fan base could have hoped for, in my opinion. We all knew there were questions about the roster and experience. Nobody knew what they were going to get in goal. Eric Comrie was a good signing as like a one, you know, as a, a tandem mate for Craig Anderson. But, you know, he goes down early in the season. Samuelson's dealt with some injuries throughout the year. You know, of course, like there's been injuries along the way. There's been dips in performance as pressure has mounted um, in this playoff push. But they have, they're one of the highest scoring offenses in the NHL. Their power plays top 10, like that right there, being able to score goals, that's how you, like, I'm not getting too far ahead of myself. I'm just saying those are qualities that Stanley Cup teams have. Like, they're going to have to get better defending, and they have the last couple of weeks. It's something they're going to have to sustain for an entire season. Goaltending is going to be a question mark. How are they going to handle this offseason when they might lose a couple of players? How are they going to replace, you know, how the guys handle the pressure of going, you know, trying to repeat career years. But they have made so much progress over these last two years. They've got their head coach in place. Don Granato, I think, has done just a tremendous job. Coaches across the league are going to have to adjust and adapt to the way that offense is way up. And I think that this group has defended pretty darn well when they've been healthy. Losing Samuelson just magnifies the lack of depth. Now, they've got capable NHL defensemen, but – 
they don't have enough that are are really able to play against top lines and give you that 22 to 25 minutes in a game. Like Owen Power can do it, Samuelson could do it, Owen and Rasmus Dahlin can do it, but there's inconsistency with Henry Okiharu's game and the third pair, although I think they've really improved it through getting Riley Stillman, like those guys, including Labushkin, I think are better in third pairing roles. And when they're forced to play more minutes, sort of the deficiencies get exposed a little bit more, but they are in a really good spot. They've got a bunch of cap space. They've got assets that their prospect pipeline is still deep after losing Josh Bloom and Eric Portillo uh, at the trade deadline to add to their, their NHL roster and deal with Portillo not planning to sign. So we'll see. I, I think that, you know, this is everything that this organization could have wanted meaningful games in April. Um, and they control their own destiny with a win tonight. That is a very good place to be in. So I think fans should really keep that in mind um, no matter what happens tonight because there's a lot of good there. And these players are going to be – like these aren't older guys who are having careers. They're younger guys who are going to continue to get better. That's the key here. This isn't like the National Predators last season when they had all these career years with somewhat older players or you know guys in their late 20s. Um, you're going to still see Jack Quinn, Dylan Cousins, and Tage Thompson, Rasmus Dali. Like, they're all going to continue to get better. Um, they've proven that throughout the season and in other stops um, and other situations throughout their careers. So thank you very much for that question. Ed, will the Sabres make the playoffs? Ed, I'm going to go back to my prediction right after the All-Star break before all of the calamity hit and they had their skid. Um, I'm going to say they missed by a hair. I, that's what I've been saying for the last few months. They put themselves in a difficult spot by losing some some games that they probably should have won, but every team does that throughout the league. Like it's even Arizona is beating good teams. Columbus is beating good teams. Um, but the Sabres had opportunities to, to really take advantage and take advantage of their games in hand. And it hasn't gone according to plan. They're in a good spot here, but I think in the end with Pittsburgh's schedule and Florida's playing really well, they're trending in the right direction despite not having Sergei Bobrovsky, their starting goalie. It's tough to pick against those two teams right now. Um, although I think the Penguins are kind of a mess. They, they just have the schedule on their side after a difficult uh, this a difficult couple of games this week. I think Minnesota and New Jersey are the next two. So thank you for that question. Alan, what are the right spots for Kulik and Savoy next season? This is all going to depend on training camp, Alan. I'm, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves because I don't know. Like Savoy had a good training camp despite having a bizarre – like his summer last summer – was completely sidetracked through that shoulder injury. Like he was limited. He didn't have surgery, but he couldn't do a whole lot from the draft. And, you know, he couldn't participate in development camp. That set him back and he still had a great camp. I think it sort of bled into his WHL season. A little slower start than expected, but he's just been on an incredible trajectory ever since and looks like a heck of a player. Curious to see um, what he looks like in camp. Like those two players, they're going to have an opportunity. They're not like, we know Kevin Adams has said it all along. He's not blocking the path for prospects like that. If they prove to be ready. Hey, like, and Savoy is going to, he's on a team that could win the Memorial cup. That is going to be an incredible development experience for him being that top guy. The target was on his back going into the year and he still played unbelievable. They, there's a reason why those two guys were untouchables when Kevin Adams was, was talking to teams. Kulik, it's going to be about defense. I think Savoy's got the defense, but physically, is he going to be ready? He's got so much creativity and talent and skill in his game that that part of it would be fine. It's just how much is the size and strength strength deficiency going to impact his ability to make plays? And it's an 82-game season. It's a tough transition for a lot of guys. So we'll see. I think the door is going to be open. Uh, the, it's My curiosity is how do they handle the offseason? Because you, you have to build in some insurance in the event those guys aren't ready. You can't bank on them being ready. That's, I mentioned that with the Olsen decision that's inevitably going to come up this summer. Um See how it plays in. I, I am very intrigued by the other guys in Rochester. Can they step up and potentially grab a role? Which leads me to my next question from Paul. Paul, thank you very much. He asked about Brandon Byro. We all know he's been, Seth Appert said it over and over again, the Amherst best player o overall this season, offensively and defensively. Could Byro make the team? Could Lukas Rusek make the team? You know, Linus Weisbox had a good year. How would he potentially fit? fit in um disappointing for brett murray i'm sure that the sabers went out and got jordan greenway because i feel like that was 
it's tough um, for Murray in that situation. Greenway kind of takes the role that you would think might have gone to him. Uh, so we'll see. Like, there's a lot of talent down there. Those guys are, are also going to be competing for roster spots. Rusek is one that intrigues me because I think he'd be perfect for that bottom six. Gets to the front of the net, makes a lot of the subtle plays, hard on the forecheck. Um, we'll see where he takes his game, but I, there's a lot of promise there. Um, so that, thank you for the question. Uh, Billsy Face, again, another <laughs> ridiculous name, but thank you for the question. Just reading the Twitter names because I'm not putting down hashtags or first names. So is there an update on Ryan Johnson? No, there is not. Johnson, senior defenseman at the University of Minnesota, is in the Frozen Four this coming weekend. I've... I've let this one go. I don't like to bat like I don't even like to bother an agent in this situation. Let the kid finish his season. Like nothing is going to be decided until that ends. They have conversations with the Sabres, so not quite yet, Billsy. Uh, I know Darren Drager reported last week. I think he told uh, Brian Duff and Marty Baron this on their podcast that he expects Johnson to sign. Um, we'll see where it goes. Lunara series, what do you expect the goalie rotation to be next season? Devin Levi and Uko Pekalukkanen are going to be given every opportunity to be the tandem in Buffalo next season. Again, tough break for Eric Comrie. Levi, the way that his year, his final season at Northeastern went, what we've seen from him in his brief time in the NHL, his, his development track – doesn't necessarily have to be like those of goalies who came before him. It, the AHL is a huge step up from college hockey. The NHL is even bigger. So the quality of shooters, the pace of play. But if Levi proves throughout the final weeks of this season, more importantly, training camp in the fall, that he is ready, they're going to have him in the NHL. The, another, another important question to ask here is, are they really going to bet on that being the case, him being ready? Um, Comrie is a nice wild card to have under contract. Although he's in a difficult situation, if Levi's not ready in the fall, if they still have Comrie, then your tandem could be Comrie and UPL. You know, Lukanen is not waivers exempt anymore next season. He's an NHL goalie. He is going to be either in Buffalo. I don't see them moving him. He has upside. Like, he has proven that he is capable of doing this when the team defends well in front of them. And of course, there's been inconsistency in his game, but he's he's a rookie. Like He's 23 years old. He's going through a lot of the ups and downs everybody else is. Just when you're a goalie, those get magnified because the puck ends up in the back of your net. So I think he has upside that is very intriguing. Um, there's a reason why you heard his name. I don't know how much actual validity to this was, but Kevin Weeks mentioned UPL possibly on the trade block. I'm sure when the Sabres called teams, they know that the Sabres have Levi. So, of course, they're going to ask about Lukanen because his resume, his pedigree, like being a big guy, like he's got a lot of intangibles that are intriguing. He's just got to put it all together. And um, I thought that game in Philadelphia was tremendous. He's going to have a couple of other big games here down the stretch. Don't write him off. Like, I, th I think that he... He's capable. I know everybody tries to focus on what happened in Rochester. His numbers there were ugly. But don't forget that he allowed three or fewer goals 13 of 16 games earlier this season. They're not in this without Lukanen. He was he held down, held it down when Comrie was out and played at a very high level. One games in Vegas, one at, you know, one in I think it was St. Louis. Like he's you know, Minnesota gets a shootout, a shootout uh, point there uh, shortly before the break. The team hasn't played very well in front of him a lot of times. Like, it's really hurt his numbers. Of course, he's had a couple of bad ones, but every goal he does, um, you see it throughout the year. Even Shesterkin in, in New York is get is you know gets grief for for the occasional bad game. So, thank you for the question. I got to move on because we are running long on time. Um, Belbus the Great, what do you think the bottom six looks like? Belbus, I'll just repeat. Like, it's. Uh, does Kulik make the team? Does Savoy make... Like, these are questions that are really hard to answer right now. Tyson Jost, yes, I do expect him to be back. We'll see if there's... If it's a one year, if it's two year, he's only a restricted free agent. I think he's been such a great fit on, on and off the ice, the versatility. I think he can bring a lot more to the penalty kill than he even has. Um, it's tough to join a team mid-season, and the whole group has just been kind of disconnected at times. Um 
They've gotten their, you know, they've gained traction, slipped back a little bit. We'll see. Like, I think Ocposa will be back. We'll see about Gergensen's. This is like the bottom, like top, like, like these are easy problems to solve compared to what they used to be for this organization. What your bottom six looks like, a little easier to answer that question compared to your top six, because now they've got a pretty formidable one. Plus, that yeah, bottom six is going to have some, some serious talent as well. Uh, we'll just see what it ends up being on opening night next season. Pardon me. Labrador guy. Um, why the sudden focus on defense? Labrador guy, I think a lot of this is that forwards are no longer... I think when the Sabres saw themselves slipping out of contention here, it took the pressure off. Like, what do you have to lose? And that really freed up some of these young forwards to stop, like, stop over-focusing, stop pressing for offense, and they got back to playing the way they should. Um, and the way that they were earlier this season. Um, this team slipped out of... They slipped coming out of the All-Star break, and of course they gained their traction a little bit at times, but it's, it hasn't, the consistency just hasn't been there since that point in time for, and a big piece of that I think is injuries. Samuelson playing through, and these aren't, this isn't even speaking specifically about guys out of the lineup. Guys are playing through stuff that I don't, like, people just don't know about. The players aren't going to talk about it. They don't want everybody else to know that they're playing through an injury. But let's not kid ourselves. Watch Rasmus Dahlin right now compared to a few weeks ago. It's remarkably different. He was playing through multiple injuries from the sounds of it. You know, Samuelson with the way he plays, he's been going through it. Pa Owen Power is only 19 years old, 20 years old. Look what he's doing. So it's a young team, like inconsistency. And then look at what's going on around the league. Offense is just way up. It's at an all-time high. It's been 30 years since we've seen this sort of offense around the league. So teams are adjusting. Players are adjusting. This is a young group experiencing a lot of these sort of pressure pack games at this point um so we'll see I think that they're going to be a much better defensive team next year just like they were a much better offensive team this year compared to last year Eric which development success story on the Sabres was unexpected I guess I would just go with Casey Middlestad get it being he's going to eclipse 50 points on a, in a third line role a lot of people wrote him off when he was dealing with those injuries last year he's just had one thing after another impact his development hasn't been able to really establish himself now finally um you know, seven more games to go, but on track to get a full year here and not where fans might want him to be, but his bosses have to be really pleased because his versatility, the contract, like I know people want to automatically run him out of town for some reason. Um, he's got to use his shot more. There's no doubt about it. He's got to be more consistent defensively, but to do what he he's to accomplish what he has development wise, Within his role, what he's helped done on the power play, I think is is certainly a success story and bodes well. Like that's a big key to why this team has secondary scoring. Like they've got players like like him. Um, Krebs doesn't have the goals, but he's creating. Like him, Okposo and Gergensen are creating. Joe's has been a good pickup, so we'll see. But I think Middlestead, you know, especially within the fan base, because of the expectations, doesn't get enough credit. And final question before I let you guys go, is it more likely Levi is the number one down the stretch if he wins tonight? Of course, right? Like if he if he comes out and has a great game in a must-win situation against a team like Florida, he's absolutely going to be in consideration for the lion's share of starts down the stretch, despite age, inexperience, what have you. So we'll see what happens. Um, but I wouldn't write, out, write off Luke in either. It's It's... Levi's presence, I think, is going to bring out even more out of UPL, that competition. Um, this is a different source of motivation at this point of the year, right? So thank you very much for joining me. I'm Lance Lysowski, the Buffalo News, Sabres, Panthers, Tuesday night, Sunrise, Florida. Sabres control their own destiny with the win. We'll see what happens. Thanks a lot, everybody. Take care.